Hey guys, Redbeard here. Uh, some of y'all may remember, uh, I used to do some stuff on YouTube, uh, tried to build some stuff. Uh, anyway, back in the day, uh, five, six weeks ago, uh, before I got sick, I was working on uh, building a chassis for the uh, SUV-10 over there. Anyway, since then, I've tried to do a few projects. I put a little uh, uh, lift springs on old CJ7, that Levi's edition. That was kind of cool. I helped a buddy out with that. Um, it wasn't doing too good during that build, uh, that build, that project, whatever you want to call it. Uh, anyway, um, so I've been dragging a little bit, been busy, but not really productive, right? Like other things in my life have come up. I got a little sick. Uh, I'm on a lot of medications right now um, for this condition. I've uh, been fortunate enough to, be, to get there. And uh, so anyway, trying to work through that. Uh, it's, uh, it's killed a little bit of my, uh, my, uh, stamina. I still got the one. I just, I just can't work like I was. So anyway, it slowed me down a bit, uh, trying to get through it, but I have to bend one more stick of tube for this, uh, chassis and, uh, a vision is still a blurry, uh, of side effects from some of this. And, uh, so hopefully that starts, keeps coming back around and I can get that last tube bent up. I don't want to change, you know, I don't, I don't want to, uh, <laughs> not duplicate it. Right. Because I tried to do it. And I, I couldn't read the angle blocks and everything. So anyway, uh, one of the things I can do is start prepping, uh, some of the tools I've bought for this project. Uh, I bought originally I had bought this and it's a, uh, tubing guillotine, uh, cutter and you stick your tube in there and you rotate this and it's got a big pull handle. And when you rotate it, it, uh, slices the tube off. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it seems to work all right. But the problem is I misread the listing and I bought one for inch and a half ID. Now, since I pull it out and chucked it up in the vise and scratched the paint, by the time I paid the restocking fee plus the shipping for this back to the company, I was going to get less than half my money back. So I just hung on to it. We'll make use of it. I think it'll work just fine for inch and three quarter tube uh, as we go along. So I held on to it for that. Uh, when I get to the new place, I got to build like some gates and handrails and whatnot so who knows uh i don't i don't think this was a waste i just didn't need it at the time so what do you do when you get the wrong part you double down and you order another one so this one here is made for inch and a half um it actually fits pretty good so a little chunky inch and a half tube here uh fits in there pretty nice you pull this down it bites off the edge of the tube you flip it over. It's cool. It's got some index marks. So if you lay it in here, what I was going to do is lay in a piece of angle iron score each side. So I need to roll it around and get, uh, get my verticals, get them on center. Uh, the goal being, I want to be able to make a bunch of notches in a hurry and I want them uniform. I'm terrible with a, uh, tube notcher and a hole saw. I can ruin a blade faster than I can change them out. And I'm sure it's something I'm doing because I know a lot of guys that have good luck with it. Uh, I'm not one of those guys. So anyway, I'm going to try to take some of the human air out of it. But what, I, what I've been looking for is I needed a way to mount these where I could pull them out of the way. Uh, they're pretty heavy, a lot of leverage. I didn't want to just bolt them to a wooden post or something, right? I wanted something uh, I could trust. So I decided to use this vice mount on the edge of the table. As I build the chassis, I'm going to offset the tube, build the chassis, kind of offset over this way at an angle. Uh, all I got to do is lay some tube down, tack it down uh, where it won't affect, be affected by the turntable in the center. Should be able to do what I need to do. I got some more cool stuff I'll show you for that. Uh, my buddy's down at uh, the machine shop made me up some plates. It should really help with this whole process. But uh, I've been looking around the shop, looking for material. I've got a good chunk of uh, 3 16 by 2 inch uh, square tube here. So when I get done cutting this up, I'm going to run it through. Drill it for a 5 8 pin, and uh, we should be good. We just slide it in here, have it come out the front, and I can pull it off and set it set it down um, when, I'm, when I'm not using it. So what I'm going to do is mount both of these side by side on this section here. I'll weld the tube in from the back, cross brace it. I think we're going to be good to go. So like I said, I was looking for material. I forgot I had this. It's a big chunk of like some... Uh, uh it's longer than my six inch triangle you know the triangle geez it's probably uh a little over seven inches 
probably push an eight inch C channel right here. So it's pretty thick. I think it's going to do just fine uh, for what I need to do. So that's what I'm going to work on tonight is get that cut down. Hopefully we get a little footage of that. Hopefully it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know. Just building tools, man. You know, got to do something. To keep me off the streets. And uh, anyway, guys, shop build's coming along great. Uh, the guys are really doing a great job down there. I got a couple of buddies working on it down there. Father-in-law's giving them a hand. And uh, yeah, man, I ordered the exterior tin. Uh, it's going to have racing stripes. I mean, why not? You know, so we're going to put some stripes on the building. And uh, uh, the, the smaller garage door is coming right along. Ordered the last of this stuff for that today. Uh, ordered all the doors, windows, uh, like everything to dry in the building, except for those big 14 by 14s. And uh, I ran into a little trouble. I don't really want to hang them off the ceiling because I'd have like eight foot pieces of you know, uh, all thread hanging down to catch the rails. And then, uh, man, that's a, it's a lot of weight sliding, right? Like according to the specs, we can hang, you know, uh, the world off the inside of that arch evenly spaced. Problem is, there's nowhere to attach evenly spaced. It's all in the seams. So when you start pinpointing it to like one bolt head in a seam, uh, spreading that load out becomes a lot more of a challenge. And uh, I could probably get away with it, man. It'd probably be fine. But uh, I, I'm a little invested in this building, and I really, really don't find, feel like finding out it should be fine. Uh, so I've decided on 14 by 14 insulated roll ups, like chain drive roll ups, you know? Uh, I think that'll be cool. I can convert them to electric drive later. Uh, for now, it's the name of the game is get them up, get them in, right? And so I uh, found some decent deals, but uh, freight, man, uh, the freight is nearly as much as one of the doors. So working on trying to find some closer to home or schedule it when I can pick them up and bring them on in. Anyway, a few challenges on that. Hopefully, uh, I don't, <laughs> hopefully I, I enjoy these 14 foot doors. I think I am. It's going to be so nice to come in off a trip pull the whole truck and gooseneck in, just park it. Like, don't worry if it's raining. Don't worry about unloading nothing. Just pull it in and park it. It's going to be so much better than having to unload in the rain at night. And uh, that that's that's kind of the goal, man. That and getting deliveries, it'd be nice to be able to deliver. And then I got a 50-foot trough drain underneath that 14-foot pull-through bay. And that uh, that's going to be nice, too, because if I come in and, you know, let well, them really snow that much in Arkansas, but snow or ice or, uh, you know, just rain, I don't have to uh, spend a bunch of time cleaning my shop up. Most of it should run to the floor drain. Well, all of it in that bay will run to the floor drain. Should be good to go. So that's where we're at. That's what we're working on. Appreciate you following along. I uh, hope you continue to. Tell your buddies about it. Tell people you don't like about it. It might be boring enough. It's going to be a good uh, trolling thing, you know. Uh, kind of rickroll them with making them watch my videos. I, I don't really care. Uh, we'll just see. Uh, watching's watching, right? Anyway, thanks for uh, checking in, guys. Let's see how this goes. Hey guys, a little bit of a fun story here. So I had to go in for my first MRI ever. That was <clears throat> good times. I've had more testing in the last uh, month than I have in my whole life. But anyway, uh, it turns out when you fill out that form, you have to answer all the questions. Leaving one blank is not acceptable. So the question about have you ever pulled metal from your being or had metal embedded in you? Uh, I didn't know quite how to answer that. Like, what are they talking? And uh, apparently they're talking about everything. Uh, <laughs> grinding wheel wires, uh, uh, metal shards, drill shavings, uh, putting your hands on top of a bunch of shavings, had to pull them out with a big magnet, stuff like that. Uh, they're talking about all of it. Anyway, uh, apparently they take it pretty serious, almost as serious as a TSA when you wear your copper infused boxers through the uh, metal detector. Uh, everybody gets pretty excited, a lot of fun, and I uh, got to get some x-rays out of the deal. Turns out I do not have metal in my eyes, uh, which is good. And uh, I did survive the uh, MRI. I didn't. I didn't go blind or anything like that. So, all good news. Uh, turns out it was worth uh, worth doing the check. Yeah. I guess. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, just a little fun. We'll check with you later. So, just in case you were craving more MRI fun facts, they tell you on the way in to do what the machine says. Well, the machine tells you to breathe in, breathe out, and hold. So I would take a deep breath, breathe it all out, and then try to hold my breath. Well, some of these were like 20 seconds long, and I, normally that wouldn't be a big deal, but uh, that's kind of why I'm in there is having some issues. So anyway, uh, turns out, <clears throat> you find out at the very end, the uh, little the lab assistant starts laughing and tells you, oh, normally we have people take a breath in before they try to hold it. Well, that would have been nice to know uh, about an hour sooner. 
Anyway, good hey times. Guys, Redbeard here. Look, uh, it's not the prettiest thing I ever built, but man, I think it's gonna work just fine. Anyway, uh, got this all fabbed up tonight. Pretty happy with that. I still need to drive the uh, drill the five H pinhole. Uh, everything fits. I do need to cut about uh, inch and a half off the end. I did cut it a little long on purpose because I didn't know how it would index here on the table. Uh, what I do like about it is my two angle back angle strong backs. What do you want to call them? Uh, notch into this corner really nice and actually make it really stable. So I do like that. When I drill this pin, I think it's going to work just fine. I'll chop this end off. Uh, I have full four-sided welds on both of these strong backs, plus you tie it in top and bottom on this uh, thick flange for the C-channel. Everything's bolted. I can access all the bolt holes through the back. And I uh, should be able to mount these uh, right up here, no problem, man. Uh, I overdrilled the holes a little bit, just not that I didn't have confidence in my drilling skills. I just want to make sure they'll fit. So anyway, we'll get them both mounted up here. <clears throat> and uh, once I have that uh, pin in, I'll do a little short showing you knots and a few tubes, whatever. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. It was good to get back in the shop and actually build something. Feels nice.